Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like today uh, to discuss some mm, very fundamental geometrical um, uh, problems and uh, issues, basically starting from the beginning of the geometry. Uh, well, in theory, the beginning uh, is associated with the name of Euclid, a Greek mathematician who lived many years ago, I don't remember, like 3rd century BC or something like this. Basically, he was the first one who tried to put geometry on some kind of solid uh, axiomatic foundation. Um, it was not like 100% successful from the contemporary rigorous viewpoint, but it was extremely successful uh, judging from the progress geometry made during his time and all subsequent centuries. So what is basically geometry? According to Euclid, it's uh, basically the science which uh, 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 is studying properties of geometrical objects. What kind of geometrical objects? Well, the most important ones are points, lines, circles, planes, and three-dimensional space where everything actually is located. Uh, planimetry is something which is uh, studying uh, everything which happens on the plane. So our plane will be this whiteboard and whatever we will uh, discuss about planimetry will be illustrated with uh, uh, drawings on this board. So let's start from one of the most fundamental concept of uh, geometry and planimetry, uh, which is a point. Now, um, point is an object, obviously, and uh, Euclid was trying to define this object in uh, whatever not exactly rigorous way he could. According to him, it's an object without uh, widths, without lengths, and which has no parts in it. Well, I mean, I would rather say it's a very good explanation of what the point actually is, not the definition, because it doesn't really identify the object itself. It's not really a rigorous mathematical definition. Similarly, he has defined lines and planes, and, uh, and then he uh, came up with five postulates, five axioms, about interrelationship between lines and, and points and, and, and planes. Like, for instance, uh, there is one and only one line uh, which can be uh, drawn on the plane and contain two given points. So that's basically one of the axioms which he put as, as the foundation of geometry. And then he built a certain number of theorems, he proved a lot of different things. He was definitely a genius at, at that time, definitely. Uh, so, let me address this kind of a definition which he came up with. Um, as I was saying, it's not really a rigorous definition, but what is important in, in this particular case is the fact that points are some objects which satisfy certain axioms. Um, contemporary viewpoint uh, is that we should not really define an object we should not really think about what the concrete implementation of the concept which is called point actually is. Is this not a point? Well, obviously, there is an open criticism about whether this particular dot is a point or not. First of all, it has finite dimensions, and point in our ideal world has zero dimension. So we will not concentrate on exact object which exemplify the point. We will rather concentrate on the properties. And now, here is a very important like, leap of faith which we have to all m m make, thinking about points and any other mathematical objects. We do not try to identify the real-life objects which resemble our abstract, uh, ideal objects like points. We don't. There are many different implementations of an abstract object, which is called point in mathematics. What is important is the qualities, the properties of, of the object. So if certain concrete uh, object satisfies all the properties which we attributed to point, we can definitely consider it to be a valid point. And whatever theorems 
uh, we, we derived about the points will definitely be true for this particular object, regardless of what that particular object is. Now, obviously, we will use traditional um, implementation uh, uh, of the point, which, which means basically a, a dot, which I will draw on this whiteboard, and the line, which is, which is the line, basically. But I would like to, to concentrate on this very, very important uh, shift in logic, that point in, it is anything which satisfies certain axioms. And as an example uh, of the object which is completely different from, from this type of a point, I would like actually to present uh, the certain fundamental uh, objects which satisfy the concept of a point, satisfy the axioms which, which, which point actually uh, uh, satisfies. And that's why we can call that particular object a point in exactly the same rights as this dot on the, board, on the board. And it will be a completely different object. Uh, so again, it's an illustration how important abstract thinking in mathematics uh, actually is. It's not a real concrete object which we are looking for in the real life uh, which would resemble our abstract ideas. We are saying that anything which satisfies axioms we put uh, as the foundation of, uh, let's say, geometry in this particular case, uh, any object, if it satisfies the axioms of the point, and the line, and the plane, then these, this object or these objects can actually be considered as our new points, new lines, and new planes, and whatever theorems were true for traditional points and lines and planes and circles and whatever, will be true for any other uh, object which satisfies these um, axioms, even if it completely differently uh, implemented. Okay, so here is my example of something which is completely different from the point which, in its traditional sense, but which still can satisfy the, uh, the axioms, and that's why we can apply all the geometry, the whole building which we build with theorems, etc., to these new objects. Here is my example. And again, I suppose that everybody understands what the point in the traditional sense is, point and line and plane. So, here is something which I will try to build, which is completely different but which, 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 uh, from the traditional point, but which still can be called a point. Imagine a three-dimensional space. Let's say these are coordinates. Uh, let's say it's x, y, z. doesn't really matter. And imagine a point somewhere here, fixed point. Let's say it has coordinates 0 and x, 0 and y, and 1 on z. doesn't really matter where it is. Now, consider this plane, x, o, y plane, this plane. It's basically sticking out from the board, if you wish. Now, for every point, traditional point, on this plane, I will draw a ray through this point uh, from our chosen point. Let's call this point M, and this is A. So with a traditional point A, I associate a ray called MA. Well, a ray is basically half a line with a direction, if you wish. Um, OK, now, my most important um, uh, 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 point is, well, it's not that point. My most important issue which I would like to discuss actually is about the traditional point A is that this particular ray drawn through our fixed point M and traditional point A in a different world, in a different geometry can actually be uh, called a point. And, uh, and here is why. So, I call this ray a point, so that's number one. Number two, I have to define uh, the line. Okay, let's have a traditional line. Here's another point B on the same plane X, O, Y, and I put another ray 
through this point B. It's also a point in my new geometry. Okay, um, now let's consider all these rays which are uh, going through every point on this traditional line. All these rays before and after. They form a plane, traditional plane, right? A plane which uh, contains the our uh, point M and entire line AB. So I am calling this plane a line, a new line in my new geometry. So in as much as the point, traditional point A corresponds to the new point, which is array MA. Uh, my line AB, traditional line AB, corresponds to an entire plane, traditional plane AMB, MAB, traditional plane, which I can call a line. Now, why is it possible? Well, let's consider one of the first axioms uh, of geometry. Uh, namely, if you have two points, there is one and only one line which contains them on this plane. Okay? Now, if you have two new points, MA, array MA, and array MB, well, obviously there is only one and, one and only one plane which I call a and B, uh, which contain these two points, which contains these two new points, which are traditional rays. Uh, so it looks like the first axioms, which I pointed out here, that there is only one line which contains two uh, chosen points, um, is basically satisfied in this particular case as well, because this new line, which is actually a traditional plane, MAB, contains uh, there is only one uh, 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 new line, the traditional plane, which contains uh, two different uh, 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 new points, which are traditional rays, M, A, and M, B. So this axiom is satisfied. And uh, just take it on face value, basically, that every axiom which, uh, which we know about from traditional geometry, where points are basically something like dots on the plane, will be satisfied in this geometry as well. It's a completely different geometry, obviously, because these objects are rays and planes rather than dots and, and, and segments which, can uh, which connect them. However, all the axioms will be satisfied, which means the whole building of geometry, all the theorems which we build upon these axioms will be satisfied as well. Now, why do we do this? Well, under certain circumstances, certain other implementations might actually be beneficial for certain cases. And here is a very important uh, difference between this geometry and the traditional geometry. An important point is related to the concept of infinity. Well, we might actually talk about uh, the point which is goes to infinity, for instance. It moves along the line to the right, and more to the right, etc. to the right, and finally it just disappears and we're saying, well, it's an infinitely remote point or something like this. This is, quite frankly, not a very good mathematical statement, because there is no such thing as infinitely remote point from, from let's say, a given point. There is no such point. Infinity does not exist as a point, so to speak. Uh, infinity might exist as a process during which this distance is increasing and increasing and increasing, and gradually it, it, it will become uh, larger and larger, larger than, than any other segment which we can think about. That's what it means that the point goes to infinity. But there is no real point which is located at the, at, at the place which is called infinity. There is no such place. But here's what's interesting uh, story about this. Let's forget about the plane. Let's just think about the point right now. So we have only one, we have only one new point, which is actually a ray. Okay. 
here is our point A, and here is our ray. All right. Now, uh, what happens if this point really goes to infinity? What, what happens with our new point, which is a ray connecting M to A? Well, it will move more and more horizontally. Let's say, just for simplicity purposes, we go along y-axis. So, our ray will have this position, then this position, etc. So, the, um, the ray will be more and more uh, horizontally located on the plane, right? But what happens with when, uh, when this particular point infinitely uh, goes to, to the right? Well, this ray will actually uh, be closer and closer to something which is parallel to this plane. So if I draw the ray which is parallel to the plane we are talking about, this actually is a limit of the positions of all these rays as the traditional point A goes to infinity. So in this particular geometry, we have a concrete element, a new point, which is a ray horizontally stretched horizontally to, to the plane, which actually does represent the infinity as a, as a real object. So in this geometry, not only we have um, all the properties of traditional geometry, and the point, and, and segments, and lines, and circles, etc. We also have a concept of the point which is which represents an infinity. And since we can actually have more than one uh, ray from the uh, from the uh, point A from the point M parallel to the plane, we can do it this way. We can do it this way. Or we can do it this way. These are all parallel rays. We have many different infinite points. Every one of them is an infinity, but one of the points is an infinity in one direction, another is infinity in another direction. So this type of geometry has even certain advantage for certain researches when we are saying that, okay, uh, the, the point which doesn't really exist in real geometry, well, traditional, not, not real, traditional geometry, um, actually the object which represents infinity does exist in this new geometry, and this infinitely uh, remote uh, points actually are numerous. Every ray which is parallel to this x or y uh, plane would represent a, a point which we can call infinity, located in one or another direction. So I just wanted to point out very important, again, issue that it's not the object itself which is important, it's the properties of this object. And if properties of two different objects are the same, if they satisfy the same axioms, we should not really differentiate them in our research. So mathematics doesn't really differentiate properties, uh, doesn't differentiate objects if their properties are the same. Let me give you just a real life example. Uh, there is a concept of a player. There is a CD player, there is a DVD player, there is a VCR player, there are many different players. But the concept of a player is something which is, in our mind, associated with certain ability to basically to produce sound or image or something like this. So that's actually um, what, what is important. It's the property to play uh, which is sufficient to call an object a player. We don't really say that, okay, player is only this particular object. Because there are many different ones which satisfy exactly the same criteria. They can play. And every one of them is a player. Same thing is this. Uh, this implementation of, of a concept called point, or traditional implementation of the concept, they are all just different implementation of different objects which satisfy the same axioms. And that's what's the most important part of it. All right, thanks. That's what it is for tonight. Thank you.